Welcome on God's Peace to you. I'm Pastor Zachariah Shippen. And I'm Pastor Emily Shipman. We serve the Northwest United Lutheran Parish in the towns of Crosby, Ambrose, Alamo, and Wild Rose, North Dakota. It is our prayer as you watch this video that you would hear God's word for your life today and that your faith in God will grow. May you come to know God's love for you more and more each day. A reading from Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your commanded you, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord and your, your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from these with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm 81. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon the day of our feast. God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph, going out over the land of Egypt, where I heard a voice I did not know. You called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel today comes from Mark, the second chapter. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to Jesus, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the, but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. And so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him 
They watched Jesus to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse Jesus. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then Jesus said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored and the Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated. I'm going to bring us back to the first reading for a bit. The first reading has these words in it. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Remember that you were a slave. And the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Remember that you were a slave. Remember that you were a slave and God freed you. It seems strange to me to have to be reminded of being slaves. It seems strange to me to have to be reminded of one's story of freedom. Wouldn't that be a memorable event? Wouldn't we remember being slaves and being set free? A little background on the story. The Israelites originally were welcomed into Egypt as a gift, as provision during a drought, and they were given land. Joseph had, had earned favor from the king at that time, and the king gave him and his family land. But in time, their population swelled and swelled and swelled, and eventually they became perceived as a threat. Eventually, a king rose in Egypt who didn't personally know Joseph and his family or the descendants, who didn't personally know the Israelite people, and the king had his own people, the Egyptians, rule over the Israelites. They became taskmasters. The Israelites became slaves. Things had gotten harsh, unbearable, and the Lord heard the people crying out. The Lord heard the people crying out, and he responded. He rose up a servant, Moses, who went and faced Pharaoh, together with his brother Aaron. Faced Pharaoh, God showed that he was God above all others. God showed signs and wonders through Moses, and eventually, the people were let go. Eventually, the slaves were set free. The people left Egypt, and God had their back. God set them free. So to remember this, to be reminded of this, so the people did not forget, God said, okay, six days you can work, six days work, but on the seventh day, rest. To remember that God is God and no one else is, six days you can work, but on the seventh day, rest. This way you will remember that work is not your ruler. You are not a slave to work. You are not a slave to Pharaoh or any other leader. You are not a slave to anyone. I have set you free. I have set you free, so for six days work, but on the seventh day, rest. And remember that I am God and I set you free. This is another reason we are given for the Sabbath. Sabbath, which is the seventh day of rest. Uh, in the early opening chapters of Genesis, we hear a different reason given for the Sabbath. Another reason about how God worked and created the world for six days. And on the seventh day, God 
rested. For six days God worked, on the seventh day God rested. There's one reason given for the Sabbath here. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there. Remember you were a slave and God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you, keep the Sabbath day. Take time to rest and remind yourselves and align these things into perspective to keep focused and remain in the freedom that God provided rather than become slaves of another taskmaster. Just pause. Rest. The word Sabbath or Shabbat in Hebrew, I think it comes from Sabbat, which is the word for stop. So the root of this is stop. For six days work and on the seventh day just stop. Just stop. Stop and remember that God is God and nothing else is and no one else is. So here's a question for us today. What has God delivered us from? We know, sisters and brothers, that this life does not last forever. We know that we will not be able to work forever. We know that weather will not always be conducive to farming, Lord, we know it. We know that businesses close and schools close and churches close, Lord, we know it. Someday all of this will end, whatever this is, someday all of this will end and indeed death comes to us all. Lord, we know it. And yet, so often we let all these things, whatever these things are, all these impermanent things, we let them get in the way and enslave us and control us and determine what we will do with every waking moment. But if we are willing to see, we can observe all around us that success does not last forever. Purses don't head to the cemetery followed by wagons and wagons of cash and toys. We know this. Greed is insatiable. We know this. These things that threaten to enslave us, we know that these things don't last forever. From all of this, Christ has set us free. Christ sets us free because we know that this doesn't last forever. And we know that jobs and toys and money and looks and property and whatever it is, we know that this doesn't last forever. Christ frees us from slavery of the world and enables us to live free again. And yet. And so God invited the people, asked the people to stop. To stop and remember that God is God and nothing else is. God is God and nothing else is. But eventually the people lost sight again. Eventually it became about the rule of stopping. We have to stop. We can't do anything. Let's recall the story in the Gospel of Mark. Can I pick on a volunteer? Awesome. Will you stand up, please? <laughs> I was really hesitant to choose you because you're in front, and I love it when people sit in front, and I didn't want anybody to be discouraged. But this is... Okay, good. All right, so let's, let's immerse ourselves again in the story from Mark. The story from Mark, I gotta find my spot here. So, listen for the people, how they miss the point. They miss the point of what Jesus is up to and about what God is up to. Listen to God breaking chains in this story 
and the people missing it. God pouring out love and healing and the people being unwilling to let the shackles fall that God is shattering. So hear this story from Mark again. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue and a man, we're gonna say woman, twice now. Twice I picked a female volunteer even though it's about a man. But Jesus could have healed a woman too and he did. Jesus entered the synagogue and a woman was there who had a withered hand. Withered hand, imagine. So it's a local synagogue, a local church if you will. Everybody knows this person with this withered hand. Has she had a withered hand from birth? Was it an accident that happened? Imagine how her life has been impacted by this withered hand. Imagine the things she's been unable to do because of this withered hand. Her hand, it's not that she was just missing a finger or what have you. It wasn't just broken and it was going to be, it was withered. Imagine a, a plant that hasn't had water. A withered hand. And they watched this person with the withered hand. They watched Jesus. They watched Jesus to see whether he would cure this person on the Sabbath so that, they watched Jesus so that they might accuse him. Not watched him because he's been up to all these miracles and what's he gonna do now? But watched him so that they might accuse him. And Jesus said to this person with the withered hand, come forward. I should have called you forward now. Come forward. So imagine with me this scene unfolding. These people are watching Jesus and Jesus says, come forward. And then Jesus says to the people, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath to save life or to kill life? And there was silence. Is it lawful to save life or to kill life? And they were silent and he looked around them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart. And he said to the person, stretch out your hand. Right? Amazing. And she stretched out her hands and they were healed, restored. How amazing is that? We clap for Edna's healing. He stretched out his hand and he was restored. How amazing is that? And yet we read the Pharisees went out and immediately they conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Immediately, immediately after that healing happened, they took off and tried to figure out how to destroy Jesus. Not, whoa, We've known Edna since she was this big. We've known this guy since, you know, we knew his parents and his parents' parents. We've seen him begging for food because he wasn't able to work because of his withered hand. We've seen him how many times and now his hand is just healed. None of that, not even half a second pause to marvel in how awesome God is. Immediately they took off and conspired with the Herodians for how to destroy him. Can you imagine? God is up to something and their response is to immediately rip it apart and destroy him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is working. Do you know it? Do you see it? I know you do, because you're here. I know you know God is alive and active because you're here. Someone in your life told you or somehow you saw it, and you're here. You know God does stuff. You know God is alive and well and active. God is doing stuff. And in what ways do we see or do we ourselves see God do something and then immediately rush out and tear it down rather than stop and pause 
remember that God is God and no one else. God is God and not me because my feet got stepped on because now this person's going to work and maybe I wanted that job. God is God and not fill in the blank. God is God. And this person is healed. Maybe we didn't think they deserved it. Maybe we didn't want to see it. God is God. How amazing. God is God and God is active. How amazing. Let's pray. Brother and sister in Christ, before we pray, I invite you to remember. Remember, beloved child of God, remember that you were a slave. What a weird thing to have to be reminded about, right? You were a slave and God has set you free. What has God done in your life? What is God doing in your life? Remember that you were a slave and the Lord your God brought you out of chains and rose you up again with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. God shows up. God is active and working. And therefore, brothers and sisters in Christ, therefore God invites you to rest, to pause and remember whatever is going on, whatever threatens to enslave you, it cannot because God is God. The Lord, your God, is God alone. Good and gracious God, we thank you that you are present and active in our lives. We thank you that you break apart chains and set us free. We pray that you continue to do so, that you open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to the ways you are working and help us to not take chains from others that they threaten to put around us. Help us to be free, to live for you alone. We love you, God. Amen. We would love to have you join us sometime for worship. Here is our parish worship schedule and our contact information. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.